Gender roles, are they still relevant? That's today's topic on the Mars Mindset. So I was thinking about gender roles and how they impact relationships, how they impact society, because you know, they say expectation breeds disappointment. So is it fair that we expect certain things out of women that we don't expect out of men and vice versa? Or is that just the way of the world? That's today's topic on the Mars Mindset. So I figured we could get some people in here, had a conversation. I'm extremely tired. I don't plan on being on here long, but as I always say, or as the saying goes, show me a man with a plan and I'll show you a man that God's laughing at. So let's get somebody in here and have the conversation. Julie Bean. Hi. You old, dependable. I'm telling you, Julie, as soon as, as, soon as I get this money on and popping, you're going on payroll. As soon as we win this Powerball. <laughs> I played that joint. I don't think I won, though. I ain't even checked the numbers. I might be a billionaire right now. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? I'm sitting here talking to you, and I'm a billionaire. That's okay. You're still going to be you. Yeah, I'll still be me. But as tired as I am, I wouldn't be a billionaire on this live right now. I'd be like, dude, you need to on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> they said someone in California won. That's crazy. Um, how you feeling today? Today was a rough day for me. But today was a rough older. day. Oh, uh, why yeah. was today? Are you at the same pizza spot you was at the other day? No. I um do y'all got BJ's over there? Yeah, you talking about the BJ's like the store? No, we got BJ's the restaurant. Nah, we ain't got no BJ's. What up, Dr. Hulk? Hey, yo. How you feel? Hey, Dr. Hulk, I meant to tell you this. I think it was yesterday. I like those pictures that you got posted on your wall back there. Oh, my, mm -hmm. MJ, my MJ pictures. Yeah. yeah, that's dope. They, are they drawings? They're, yeah, they are drawings. Um, a couple years ago, everybody know that I... I'm always an MJ fan, but um, one of my paraprofessionals, he got a make for me a few years ago. Oh, okay. So, what are y'all thoughts on gender roles? Just in general, do like, do y'all, do y'all, uh, ideologically, do you believe in traditional gender roles, or there should be none? What are y'all thoughts on gender roles? Well, I was raised like in my culture they are strongly enforced <laughs> but um i think nowadays people just need to make things work and communicate you're talking about within relationships right yeah 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 i hear you on that you're saying is whatever works let's just roll with it. as long as the train on the tracks and it ain't derailing and we get to our destination let's just keep it moving okay Absolutely. What about within society? Do you do you think we should maintain certain gender roles within society at large? No. And the reason why I say that is because in our society, women are come, come second to men, right? But I've learned that we can do almost the same thing that men can do when you say come second what do you mean uh as far as like pay um uh moving up within the ladder like all of that is actually is real um depending on like it, it don't even depend the industry to be honest because we all experience that at some point in our careers where tom Sorry, Dr. Hawk. <laughs> I, just, I just realized I used Tom as a name. Say, hold on, you got to change, change the name. <laughs> Tony. Tony, um, you know, may not even have the same skill set or merit that I have, but he'll come in at a higher salary doing the same mm. job. You know, okay. and, and I think part of that is because society has uh conform to this belief that women come second to men mm, okay so 
of on that particular ideology, I do think there are instances where women are discriminated against, right? But I also think that there are natural or choices that are made by women at large that help maintain the wealth gap, which is the choices of the career fields that men and women like to go into. Mm -hmm. So I think I don't disagree with the idea that it happens to women. I I would give pushback on the idea that the only reason there's a wage gap is because of just men and women. I think there's more to it than that. Dr. Hope. So like Julie, like as far as gender roles, like I grew up, um, I grew up in a in a Islamic religion where the role of the woman is definitely different from the men, which is I will say once I became an adult, the role that the woman play as far as the religion did kind of cause me to kind of move away from the religion. Mm -hmm. So that, yes. And then I, and I will say, I don't see that there's a salary gap now, but I will say that there's a block on certain positions that will push a woman over, you know, or, or, allow them to elevate because they'll go with the man first, which I have experienced in my career because I knew I was my position. I knew I was more qualified. I knew I had most experience and I knew my capabilities because no disrespect because he was my he, the guy was my homie, but it was a, a position that was open and he was selected for the position because he was a black male it's and, you know instead so i've experienced that so right so 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 on top of that now we now we have this disparity because now companies and society are like oh well let's fix this so let's elevate our black men mm -hmm. so who gets pushed down even further hold on you're saying hold on hold on julie you're saying that companies are willing to elevate black men. You're saying, okay, so let's look at it this way. Are you telling me they're saying, okay, we got to hire somebody who's black? Right? Yes, yes, no, absolutely. Hold on. Let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. You're saying, they're saying, okay, we got to hire somebody black, right? Got to be black. We need a black person because, you know, the diversity, the, what do they call it? Diversity, inclusion. Diversification. And group mm -hmm. Saying we got to have a black person. And what Julie is saying is that they like, all right, well, we're going to make it a black guy. Okay. That's real. Wow. Why? That's that? real. Why? Well, the reason the reason that's surprising to me, um, is because I know that black men are the most likely to be, um, the lesser skilled workers in America, right? So in my mind, at the rate, at the comparative rate that black women go to college in comparison to black men, they wouldn't even have that many black men to choose from in my mind. But if that's what you're telling me, you know, I'm a cop, so I don't know. I, I just find that interesting. But and and you see it a lot in different education. Hey, hold all on, the... hold, hold on, hey Julie, hey, uh, until you're ready to talk, uh, hit the mute button because I can hear oh, the sorry. background. Go yeah. ahead, Dr. Hope. See that in in um, positions of leadership and education all the time. I'm all sorry, say that again. Posi positions of leadership and education, you see it all the time. Okay. As you saying you saying you see them choosing a black, black man over a black woman? Yeah, just because I think it's the visual. We can't hear you, Dr. Hawk. Is your phone ringing? You might have a phone call coming in. Say something, Dr. Hawk. Yeah, you hello? Back? Yeah, yeah I'm you back. back. All right, cool. Go ahead. Yeah, it, it I, you see it all the time. It's it's the visual of the the image of this black man, especially if you go into like an inner city school, like a high school or something like that. You will see that there the majority of high school leadership is black male. And again, no no disrespect to my brothers that's in a position at all, but as a female. I think that us in the workspace, we have 
to work so much harder to prove who we are or that we're qualified because we're always being compared to the black male. We're always being compared to the white woman, to the white man. So we have to work a little bit harder in the workplace to prove that we are qualified. Okay. Dr. Hope, have you ever listened to uh, Jordan Peterson? No. Jordan Peterson, he he, he, I mean, he talks about it. Like, you know, they talk about the same stuff on different shows and stuff like that. But I've seen this thing where he talks about, you know, you know, you know, you know, you, you know who Jordan Peterson is? I don't even, I know. I don't know who okay. he is. He's, he's, a, he's a psychologist. He's like a well-known psychologist. He's written a bunch of books and stuff like that. He's a really mm -hmm. interesting guy. Sometimes, they, sometimes he gets on people's nerves, but a lot of stuff that he talks about is, you know, he's very informed, we would say. And so I've watched some of his videos, and what he talks about is he doesn't deny that um, there are women out there who get discriminated against because they're women. He goes into the different personality traits of people, right? And it, one of the things that he talks about is how women are more agreeable than men. And people who are less agreeable tend to um, climb corporate ladders and have success at a better, quote unquote, rate than people who are agreeable. Because, okay, let's say, let's say you and I, Dr. Hawk, are going for the same position, right? And we'll just say that you are the average uh female and i am the average guy so that means on average you're going to be more agreeable than i do right so oh let's say we both can get the job right um when it comes down to salary negotiations i'm not gonna know what they're offering you and you're not gonna know what they're offering me and so they may say okay dr Hope, we're gonna offer you seventy thousand dollars right seventy thousand dollars a year based on the principle of agreeableness being more of a trait in women you're going to be more likely to accept that 70,000, right? Whereas if I, being a guy who's going to be less agreeable, I'm like, nah, y'all got to pay me 80, right? But the question is, is had you asked for 80, would you have gotten it? Or did your agreeableness cut you out of the $10,000? Now, I'm not saying that that's the case all the time. Obviously, it's different, you know, different scenarios. But it's just something that I find interesting in terms of the the psychological traits of a particular of, of of groups of people period you know what i'm saying mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so but yeah i you know i can see why women feel the way they feel but julie i i, I gotta give you some pushback julie and let me tell you why i say this most people when they go when they're applying for positions they only have the information that they have in front of them. Like, for example, if Dr. Hawk was applying for a leadership position and another, pre, uh, you know, a male was uh, also applying for, they only have the information that they're presented with. Okay. I'm in the background because I work HR. Okay. Thank you. So I'm privy to more information. Right. And that is why I can say yes men especially, so it's, it's like a, a tier thing right first it's a man now 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 we're talking black men and then it's a woman now we're talking black women versus white women blah 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 so it's not just to say men the the, the reason why i say that is because not only do women have to work harder present better all of the other things and still not be offered uh, even salaries compared to their men. Now you have to trickle it down a little bit more. Black women mm -hmm. have have a, like a, a a a further climb, if you would, because so the, I I see it. Okay, remind me that I wanted to give you pushback on something that you said. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Do what do you think? Do you think it's simply the fact that uh, it's black women, or do you think that there is more to it? Like, for example, right? Um, say someone's running a company and they don't particularly have a problem with women, right? But they know that. So, say, say I own a company, right? I own a company, I don't really do no work, I just own the company, and I'm looking to hire a CEO to run these things or a manager to run these things, but the people 
who the, the my foot soldiers are a bunch of hardcore, rough and rugged dudes. You know what I'm saying? And I already know, like, man, and, and it's not because they the only it's not because that's who I want necessarily, it's because that's who applied for the job, right? And I say to myself, man, I would love to I would love to hire Julie. But if I hire if I hire Julie, they're not gonna listen to her. And it's gonna be a problem. How do, how how am I supposed to traverse that? I mean, that has happened to me before, actually. And what I would say is if if I'm qualified and the only thing that separates me from this other person, this other candidate, is our gender, then that speaks to the owner of the company not being able to control his staff to begin with. But okay. it's your control. It's your job to control. I'm hiring right. you. I'm hiring you to control the staff. I understand that, but with that comes the the assumption that you, as the owner, the silent owner, whatever, whatever, is going to back me up. You know what I mean? Like that actually did happen to me, where they hired me to control the staff, and all the things that I tried to implement were not. Um, they were not supported by. The ownership. The upper management. So right. Right. So what I'm saying is, is in that particular situation, I can see why someone would come to that conclusion. I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying I can see, I can see why they would be like, man, I'm running the business now. What if very matter of fact, wasn't it somewhere here recently where like the whole police department quit and they hired a mayor? The 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 mayor was a black female or whatever. And the whole police department, it was only like five or six officers, but they ended up quitting. Right? And then they ended up firing her. And I don't know if they brought the police officers back or whatever the case may be. But I just be wondering, it just makes me wonder, what is it that makes someone say, okay, we don't want no black woman? And and I'll tell you, I'm in Florida, right? So I don't know about other states, but here, I've experienced where the owner of the company just was not it was not comfortable within him to have um a ceo be a black woman like he specifically asked me to ensure a latino or minority or a black oh you you cut out you got a phone call so, sorry not too dark skin male to run his company not older is, than 50 years old wow so so you got age race and gender discrimination boom, so boom. julie <laughs> this this is the pushback i wanted to give you right and i'm just thinking you said that gender roles in society shouldn't be they shouldn't exist necessarily right uh is that what you said i extent. mean to some extent hold on. i know Okay, what, what 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 you mean? Yeah, you can clarify. Like like what I mean is if if we have a goal, let's just work towards our goal. I'm not gonna sit here and not um uh uh I don't know, take out the trash because I'm a girl and I don't wanna get my hands like I just think if, if there's a goal and you're qualified and you're not medically disabled or something pick up the slack here and there that's that's really what what i think mm. realistically okay well the way you you know the way you said it earlier i don't remember exactly how you said it i was just gonna say i think gender roles are important in certain ways and not important in others right? i agree with that um i can tell you right now if somebody busts up in my crib i'm the one that's going to lay down and that's just how it's going to be and that's a gender role, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? Right, but what about my crib? I don't have a man in my house. I Not, have to be able to defend it. Yeah, but yeah, that's because you're the only one there. But if I happen to be visiting you, right, and somebody busts, I keep my shit on me at all times, Julie Bean, just to let you know. So if, if I'm if I'm visiting you, right, and somebody busts up in your crib, you know who's going to land down? I am. I am. <laughs> I'm gangster too. Okay, but, but you know, but, but if, no, Mr. We, Tom, we, if Mr. Tom tell you, Doctor Hulk, go upstairs, get the shotgun, and do not open the door for nobody but me. I'm about to go lay this guy down. Are you gonna do what he told you to do? 
I probably will, but he probably has to tell me a couple times because I'm stubborn like that. Don't don't <laughs> come on, Doctor Hawk. Don't be like that. The man, the man, Mr. Tom, know what he's doing. He about to go to work to put the chopper out on him. But no, I just say that to say that, like, um, oh, Doctor Hawk, don't leave. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> don't leave the chat. Um, but um, I think the gender roles are are important in certain aspects. You know what I'm saying? I, I To me, as a man, I'm like, if we walking together, you're walking on the inside, right? That don't mean that I always got to be the one driving the car. But it's right. certain it's certain aspects of it. Maybe it's a safety thing, right? Maybe as a man, uh, or as men, we just feel like it's our responsibility to keep women safe to the degree that we can. Mm -hmm. And maybe outside of that, gender roles may not matter as much. Now, what if he's like four ten? What they got to do with it? Like, what if he's smaller than me? What they got to do? It's his job. I I get that too because I do find comfort in knowing that I feel as though my husband will protect me. So that I do get. Yeah, I mean, I think, and, and because of that, I think that that's built in, right? I just think that's just built in. Like, even if you look at um. Like, if you ever watch National Geographic, right, the male line don't do a whole lot. He be sitting around chilling. The woman line is the one that go hunt, get the food, she bring it back, and then they eat. But I promise you, if another male line roll up in that bad boy, he going to protect what's his. So because we have that gender role, just having that one gender role established in my mind, there's, whenever there's a positive, and I don't mean positive meaning good or bad, I mean when there is something that is in the affirmative, there has to be something that exists on the other side of it, right? Mm -hmm. And so, in my mind, right, if you think about uh, it's my job as a man to like protect and provide, I think a good gender role for women is, and we're talking generalities here, right, is to take care of the young kids. And I've heard people push back against that because people can, because it, nothing's absolute. People will say like, yeah, but there are some men that's better at taking care of kids than women. Yeah, but if you have a newborn and that newborn needs milk and you don't have no Similac, that man ain't providing no Similac. You know who's going to provide, you know who's gonna provide the, the, the milk? The woman, right? And I think that's nature's way of letting us know like it's certain things that are meant for certain genders. Mm -hmm. Doctor Hall, you like you about to say something? What you got? No, I, I agree with that. When it comes like it's it's the the natural role of a woman is to be the nurturer. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Ju Julie Bain, what you think about that? Oh, you muted, Julie Bain. You muted. I said I I agree, you know, with that. But I'm still going to push back. Not every not every situation is going to be in that way like there are some mothers who can't mother you know there are some mothers that don't have that in them to to be the nurturer so the the, the dad has to pick up the slack or you know do do that i just think that the way it used to be so rigid is is not that way anymore well yeah i mean like i said there's always there's always going to be exceptions to the rule, but exceptions don't negate the rule. I personally, I don't know all mothers. I don't know most mothers. Mm -hmm. I tend to believe that most women who ha who have babies do the best they can to raise their kids and take care of them. You know what I'm saying? I think it's just natural. Matter of fact, I would go as far as to say, like men, men are less likely to take on somebody else's kids. A woman is just nurturing because she's just nurturing, right? Whereas if a man is kind of like, man, shoot, you know, I like her. I like her a lot. You got three kids. <laughs> Whereas if a woman, I think, and it's just my opinion, I think a woman is more likely. And we're talking about, oh, we're talking about on average. I'm not talking about the exception. I think on average, a woman is more like, what happened to Julie? I think a woman is more likely to be willing to embrace kids that ain't hers. I don't think so. You disagree? I disagree. Why is that? And it could be because of my situation, because my husband stepped in to take care 
But when it comes to, it's called baby mama drama for a reason. You don't hear is baby daddy drama, right? Am I am I right or am I wrong? So um, not to the degree, <laughs> not to the degree, not to the. Degree. I'm not going to talk about the exception. Yeah, so not to the degree. Yeah, right. But it's it's called baby mama drama because I think that you have women when it's a woman stepping in to take in somebody else's kid it's it's questions about is your baby mama crazy or is she not you know because women are because we're nurturers we're protective too of our clubs where we don't want somebody else taking on the role as mommy when that's my role oh uh, and you think that happens more for women than for men i do see this is what i think this this is what i think dr Holt. i think because women are the ones who typically have the children, right? And women are just naturally, by nature, more nurturing. Mm -hmm. Let me, I'm, and I'm not, I'm not trying to make a point. I'm just thinking through this thing because if you have a female with kids on the dating market, and you have a guy with kids on a dating on the dating market. Which one of those, and they have similar situations, which one do you think? would get rejected more because they have kids? I would say the men. You think the men would? I don't know, Dr. Hawk. I think I, I just that. I would say the men. And that's me personally. But see, I, 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 that's what I, 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 and my thought process is, again, when it's a man, and, and I hate to generalize women, and female, but the reason that my circle is small when it comes to female, because when it comes to female, comes a lot of drama. And I would say the female, because if you're trying to protect your peace, you want to avoid drama when it's a man that has kids. You got to ask questions because the same thing, too, because again, because women are more nurturing, you're more than likely that. If it's a man with kids, the kids won't be there as often. When it's a woman with kids, those kids going to be there all the time. So you're saying that the woman would get rejected more? I think so. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> because, and I was going to make you right. I, I, I guess I, I just argued that the other way. You argued it the other way because yeah. and that's what I'm saying. I was going to say because typically the woman has the kids. Right, so you could date a guy, a woman could date a guy with kids and only have to deal with the kids on the weekends or every other week. And she might not, she might just be like, Oh, all right, I'm going, you know, I'll be at my mom's house for that weekend if, if you know if that if it's contentious, right? Mm -hmm. but the woman, she can't, and so, and I think too, because because it's the role, the gender role that's the conversation we have of the man to protect and provide, right? Men are analytical, right? And I'm not saying that women aren't, but men, we, we do we do cost benefit analysis. And we like, well, shoot, man. I like them kids, but I don't know if I can afford them, right? I think with a woman who has kids, if she's taking on other kids of his kids, it's still his responsibility. It's not his responsibility to take care of his kids and her kids. Now, I'm not saying women don't work. I'm not saying women don't contribute. We're talking about from a gender role perspective, we all subconsciously programmed to think like, oh, that's still his job. See, I guess I, I'm thinking, I think it is 50-50. I, that's what I, my thoughts are. I huh. think probably 50-50 as far as the It depends on the person and their values that are instilled in them. Because when, when you have a mother and someone else, it, uh, you know, like a wife and a kid's mom, you know, they husband has, people think it's an odd situation when the two get along you know what i'm saying when the two moms get along with each other like i think of like will smith and you know his situation you know that the show was based on uh -huh. you know people think it's odd when the, when the moms get along oh yeah I, I i do think it depends on the situation but i just think if we were to do like a poll i think women with kids because Dudes, men are already kind of skeptical of marriage and commitment, right? And I think the more kids or kids or baggage that a woman has, 
the harder it is for her to find a husband in comparison to a guy because we don't necessarily think of the kids as the guy's responsibility. And a lot of times they're not. They, they, they're not, like, they're not, like, my wife take, takes care of the kids in ways that I don't know. I do everything except for bath time. I've done bath time before. But if you were to make a list of the things that my wife do for the kids, I mean, I mean directly for the kids, like directly to and for the kids, she's blowing me out the water. Mm -hmm. And I ask her, I'll be like, oh, you need any help? She's like, no, nah, I got it, right? But I don't know. I, don't, I think it's more than 50-50. I think it's tougher for the women, but that's just, you know, we don't have we don't have a scientific poll or whatever, so that's good. Dr. J. Hey, J. Hey. It's good to see you. How you feeling? You what you in the car? Yeah, I'm in the car. Tomorrow I'm um what, Huh? What kind of car are you in? I'm in a I'm in my, my Mercedes. <laughs> it look like a spaceship. Man. It's new <laughs> Oh man. No, nah, yeah, I'm in the car. Tomorrow the king birthday. Oh, word? What's his birthday? Oh, I ain't got my watch on. What's his birthday? What's tomorrow? The ninth? The ninth. Oh, okay. Well, tell them I say happy birthday if I don't talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> I'm riding around trying to get everything I need to have. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, let, well, I, I'll take a little bit of your time. What are your thoughts on uh, gender roles within relationships and gender roles within society at large? Oh, Jesus. I always come on when you're trying to. Sorry. Um... Gender roles and relationships, you mean as far as, like, what, the wife taking care of the kids? Because I cut in and out, and the husband taking care of the bills. Like, what What do you, what are you exactly asking? You know, always got to be difficult a little bit. I just, I just want your opinion on it. And, I mean, I know that just like Dr. Hulk say, and just like I say, and everybody else, not everybody else says it, but we know this about everybody else. Our thoughts, opinions, and perceptions are based on our experiences. So I understand that you may have a perspective that's different than the norm. I'm just asking you your opinion. It's an open question. There's no right or wrong answer. I ain't trying to trap you. I ain't putting you in the box. I'm just asking the question. But it's always, it's always something with you. Oh, well, I'm always going to get you pushed back just because that's what makes I you always get put in the box. So I don't even believe him when he say that no more. Lil um, told me real quick. So Lil told me Lil, Lil was like Jamie answering questions like you trying to trick. I said I ain't trying. If I'm gonna put you in the box, I'm gonna tell you like, hey, look, I'm about to take you down this rabbit hole right quick, Doctor J. But I ain't taking. I just want your opinion. I mean, <clears throat> I think that okay. So gender roles in the in the workplace. Let's start there. I do think sometimes in the workplace is it's a lot more difficult for women as opposed to men. I, for me personally, I'm not sure, you know, I feel like for me personally, transitioning into, into trying to, not even trying, going from one stage of healthcare to the next, it has been, I've seen a lot of things as far as men and women in probably me and Dr. Hawk field. I think it's, I, I think it's very, it has been very challenging. Let's just say that. <laughs> it's been very challenging. Um, now, in the home, I do think sometimes there are gender-specific roles that people follow in the home. Like, like I feel like it's always been the thought of the woman takes care of the kids, the man takes care of the house. That has been since the beginning of time, what people have been taught. Or conditioned to think. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, do you I heard your do you have a problem? Do you have a problem with that? In my workplace, yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Okay, so yeah, both of them. Problem? In, I, I know you got a problem in the workplace. Yeah, everyone should have a problem with that. I'm talking about. Oh, I, absolutely, absolutely. I, and I, and I, and I have a problem with it specifically because I feel like I put in just as much work. As everybody else to get where I want to be, and I feel like at times, no disrespect to all men, a lot of the men in my field, or Dr. Hawk could probably she could speak to this in 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 the healthcare field. I do feel like a lot of times they feel like they're superior to the women. Yeah. It's just what I have run into 
and and I've run into it actually a lot now in what in my transition. Right. I like, don't. Yeah, because I would think too, like even in your field, whereas a woman doctor or a female doctor, which is why I'm a, a true fan of married to medicine. When you see all in one doctors doing anything, like that the women are or tend to get the least respect in that position as a man. And then even when you look at a nurse, like when you see a male nurse, it's like people are like, oh, is he gay? My brother was a male nurse, but it it's 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 it, that's what it is. And even in teachers, like the role of the teacher was typically the female and when it comes to administration it was the white male so i can see that hierarchy there and that thought process both in education as well as the medical field so okay i have a question julie i know you okay what, what you got julie this is my question to all of y'all if this country right let's just say this country was built on second class citizens right um why do you think that that mentality would just poof, disappear? If there are still people in leadership of a certain age, that that mentality has built, been instilled into them. Like my daughter was just telling me like this, we won't see a change until those people have like passed away because they may sit upright and like be respectful at the table, but there's a lot of people in leadership and in power that still have that mentality of mm -hmm. second-class citizens. And, and they're still in power, whether it's in the medical field or the education field. You know what I mean? So that's why I say, like, there's a huge gap, and that's not going to go away anytime soon. Not until a lot of those people that are up there in age and in and, and, and with their beliefs kind of get out of the way. So in my opinion, right, you're never going to get rid of that, right? Regardless of who's regardless of who's in power, right? It's just about who's in power. That's how I see it, right? And I say that, I say that to give me one second, Dr. Hall. I say that to say, right, that people are going to look out for their own, right? We would do it too. We just not in power. So if Dr. Hulk was hiring between Dr. J and let's say let's say Dr. Hulk school had a doctor uh, had a doctor's position open, right? I know they got school nurse, but let's just say it's a doctor's position, <laughs> right? And Dr. Hulk is the one who makes the final decision, and it comes down between Dr. J and Dr. White guy, and they are equal, right? We would all expect Dr. Hulk to hire Dr. J, right? Mm -hmm. So I say that to say, I'm not saying that it's right. I'm saying that I think that that is inherent in humans, which is to take care of your own and people that look like you. Not necessarily, but for me, and I would say this for me, if we're talking about the school that I'm at now, mm -hmm. I would hire Dr. J because she is black, yes, but not because I'm looking out for her because the kids that we, the staff, don't represent who we serve. Okay. And, right. And, so not, and, to cut you, not to cut you off, that's the same thing I was saying when I gave the example about the CEO hiring someone to, to oversee these rugged dudes who are doing the job, mm -hmm. right? But for one there's there's the interest of the in your in your case it would be the school in his case in our hypothetical it would be his company right but i just i still i like i wouldn't even be mad at you if you was like yeah i'm, I'm taking if you if you called me and were like yo Charles, i got a question for you i can choose between this white guy and dr j and both of them got they, they the same and and i look at it as who is <laughs> i'm sorry i look at it as who who fits the role better. I've actually had a black woman take me to EEOC because uh -huh. she felt like she deserved a second grade teaching position when that that's not what's best for the kids. You know, that kind of thing. So, if, But if you were in a school of white kids, would you hire a white guy or would you hire Dr. J? See, the my school see, is and more that's my, What I'm saying, what I, what I, right? 
But what I'm saying is this, before you even answer, the fact that the pause comes, it tells you it's in hand, like we take care of our own, right? The only, re the, not the only, re the reason we have an issue is because we're not the ones making the decisions. We're not the one, but when we are in power, we do the same thing. But, it, and, and again, it, it depends on a person character, person's character. I had a counselor who was my best friend. I had kids in the school that didn't even realize she was white until she told them like until they said I'm white and little girl's like oh you white because they saw that that she cared more than the color of her skin I, so I just, I, I'm sorry to ask you what does it look like for officers how are female officers treated as opposed to a uh, male because if you think about police officers that's typically a male job a job for men as opposed to women well, who, when you say how are they treated, treated by who? I guess you by the public. Are they respect the men? Public. Hold on, hold on. You say are you talking about by the public? By the public and by the, the, the men and the department. Okay. Well, in my particular department, my department is really diverse, right? And my, my, my department is really conscious of diversity and all of those things. So from what I see, the women aren't treated too much differently than men, right? Because everything that is every everything is scaled. So it's not like it's not like oh, you're a woman, so you get paid less, right? Right? You, or you're a woman, so you get different health insurance or something like that. In terms of promotions, right? They make sure, and and this is my opinion. It looks like they're trying to fill out the fill out everything, right? We need we need to we need somebody to look like this here. We need somebody to look like this here. We need somebody to look like this here. Maybe that's to meet a quota. I don't know, right? Go ahead, Dr. Hope. But let me ask you this. Let's say if you had a female partner mm -hmm. and had to approach a group of black men, mm -hmm. would you tell her, no, you don't do it. Let me approach them first. Now, you're in the same position, the same job. Would you, because, again, as a male, we you tend to be the protector. What would you do for that partner if it's, you know, that, that had to happen. That depends on the partner, because I worked with females who were more hardcore than I were, and if I thought that's what needed to be applied at that particular time, and that's what she wanted to do, to be honest now, I'm always honest, right? I'm I'm transparent. I've worked with females who, like, and y'all might take this the wrong way, but we tell them, like, yo, you a pit bull, huh? Right? And if she got that pit bull in her, and that's what needs to be applied right now, I'll be like, hey, you go talk to them, and I'll be right here, I'll be, it's called a contact and cover. Right. But you have other females that aren't as they don't have that much dog in them. Like, you know what? I talk to them and see what's going on. But it also depends on the group. Right. Because if I think that this is a group of people that um, going at aggressively or verbally aggressively isn't going to work, me being a person who's communicative, I'm going to be like, yo, let me talk to him first. Right. So I'm assessing more of the situation than just the male female perspective because our lives are on the line at this point. So I can't be I can't be like, oh, let me do this because I'm the guy. Nah, we might get us killed out here. We might get jumped. So if I think that the qualities that I bring are better suited to go address it, then I'll do it. If I think her qualities are better suited, then I'll let her address it. But that's not a male female thing. That's a personality thing. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. But in terms of society, but to answer your question too, in terms of society now, um, I think being a female in law enforcement is a gift and a curse. Right? I think it's a gift because men are just conditioned to not be as aggressive with females as they are with men. So that could be beneficial. Right? Um, but there are men out here who like, yo, ain't no woman going to tell me what to do. Right. And whereas if I might step to him, he would be like, whatever. Cause, and, and because, because in his mind, he's more willing to um, follow the orders that I give him than her. Right. That could be the case too, but it's very difficult when you're dealing with crime, because you got to think like, like in your, in your field, Dr. Hulk, in terms of the kids, like you're dealing with a particular demographic of, of humans, right? In law enforcement, you're dealing with 
just society at large. So you have to be able to read people and be like, I think I can talk to them. Or be like, oh, no, I ain't no talking to them. Hey, you can go get them, man. I'll be right here. And we both going together from a law enforcement, from an officer safety perspective, you know what I'm saying? But it's what, what action is going to get us the best possible outcome. And that's based more on personality type than male or female. I, I get it, but I'm going to say this. In education, we work with the same demographics as you because, and it could be the parents, it could be the kids, because this is the thing. It ain't like, you know, they come from this different places and it's not like we get the good ones and the parents keeping the bad ones at home. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or keeping no, the good I ones at home. So it's just like some of these parents come at you. Right. As teachers and then it, the society at large as a, as the principal, you do have to deal with the teachers, the kids, the parents, mm. you know, so it can be rough. Dr. J, what you thinking? <clears throat> no, I'm just saying, thinking the question I had for, for you shows is do you said that you feel like the women aren't treated any different in your field? You feel like do you feel like they're I, treated equally? I said I said in my department. In your department? I can't speak for like, Dr. Hulk can't tell me about what's happening in the school down the street the same way I can't tell Dr. Hulk what's going on in her police department, right? And I don't spend all day looking for those types of things, so I can't tell you. I can only tell you from my experiences, women do really well in my department. That's from what I see, right? Right. I, I'm sure I can bring a, a female officer on here, and she could tell you about some instances that she's had that I, that I wasn't privy to, right? But it's not like they post... It's not like there's this newsletter that goes out every week with people's complaints. So I don't see those things, right? But I see women do the same things that men do. I see women climb the ranks. I see women um, detectives. I see women crime scene officers. They show up on scene and they run their scene just like, a, just like a male officer would run their scene. And nobody gives them pushback. But like I said, I can only tell you from the experiences that I have. Right, I can only tell you what I see. Right. So I mean, I'm, I guarantee you, there's there's some females like, um, I had a female sergeant one time, and y'all know me like, I'm pretty easy to get along with, and I don't know if she thought I was an a hole or whatever the case may. I I wasn't giving her pushback or anything, and she, I don't know what it was. She like, Bradley, you gonna do this because I told you to. I was like, Hey, Sarge, look, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, I don't know what's going on. But you ain't got to come at me like that. You know what I'm saying? And and I understand that I understand that some other guys may have given you some pushback because you're a female. Maybe that's what happened. I don't know. But there's no need to come at me like that. If you give me an order that's lawful, right, and reasonable, I'm just going to do it. So you ain't got to scream on me. We good. She said <laughs> you were going to do it because she told you to? Yeah. My brother had the same situ situation Literally, his boss was a fe is a female was a female is a female well was because he ain't there no more, and she was just he said the way that she was talking to him was like somewhat was really like that that he she basically said you're gonna do it because I told you to, but she was uh -huh. just so I guess disrespectful to the point where my brother was just like who do you think you talking to <laughs> so. He's no longer working there anymore. <laughs> I'll say this now. That's not my leadership style. But the unfortunate thing is I think that that sometimes that women feel like we have to enforce our authority that way because we tend to be not respected as a woman. And again, and that may not be a woman. When I first got into uh, – admin i was younger than most of the teachers on the staff so even ageism you know you do have to establish your leadership a certain way you may not have to say do it because i told you now i i've had situations where i gave a directive and people questioned and i said you know and i would ask the question of because i gave the directive it shouldn't be questioned i'll give you my why i gave you my why behind it but 
at the same time you still question me like it, let, it's okay let me ask you this though um is it your assumption that you're being questioned because you're a female not, when it comes to certain men or in this situation i was questioned because i was administrator that was younger and again when you get into education people are used to doing the status quo and they fight change period and so i know that was why i was getting questioned mm -hmm. as to who this young black girl thinks it, she is coming up in here trying to change what we've been doing i i know that was it um but at the same time like for your sergeant to say that you may not have done anything to question her but she probably felt as though because i'm a woman in leadership i gotta assert my authority some kind of way Right. And as a society that has put us in that situation, like we, like I said, we got to work so much harder to establish our authority and to prove ourselves and drop as black women. Yeah, but I, I hear you. I hear you. And I, fi I figured that she had gotten some pushback before, but I'm a conscientious person, right? So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not carrying out a mission to the degree that you want me to without me understanding why I'm doing what I'm doing, right? So I think it's easy for like one of the, one of my one of my friends is my lieutenant now, right? We got 15 years on, he's my lieutenant. I question him, right? He a black dude. We, we he a couple years younger than me. I question him because I'm the type of person who likes to have all the information. Right. Right. Saying is it's because of everything that you're saying. If I question you, Dr. Hulk, in that way, if you were my lieutenant, it would be easy to, for you to feel like Yo, Bradley only doing this to me because I'm a woman, right? And I'm, I guess what I'm saying is, is that as an employee, right? Or what's the word? What's the word? If you're a supervisor and I'm an employee. Subordinate. You're a, sub a subordinate. I'm a subordinate, right? It's very important for you to not approach me the way you approach everybody who did something wrong to you because it could just be, you could be like, yo, Bradley, like, let's talk. Like, um... Why are you asking on? Why are you asking me all of this? And I just be like, to be honest with you, LT, because you know, it's difficult for me as a person to go out and and do this and not understand the crime stats or why we. I just have a need to understand because if not, I'm not. I'm telling you now, I'm not going to put my effort into. It. I'm just be like, all right, well, I'm just doing what they told me to do, not because I understand the mission. Right. But, that, but my my questioning could be misconstrued as like, oh, he's only doing it to me, doing this to me because I'm a woman. Right. And I mean, we all, we all pay for that, right? Right. Because I've had questions, you know, moving into positions. And I would say to myself, I would never say this. Like, I wonder if they would have questioned that white man that was in this position before me. Right. But, so, okay. But the, the issue, and I'm not, I'm not saying you shouldn't ask that, right? I'm just saying it's one of those things that sucks because you don't know the answer to that. Right. And that makes it. That makes it really difficult to traverse. Now, if you work in a job like you do, you might be able to be cool with a couple of people and be like, yo, did they get the last guy these types of problems or is it just me? Listen, I, the school I'm at now, I've been there. This is my third year. I got a couple that's still saying, well, Dave did this. I'm like, I'm not Dave, bro. Like, Dave gone. He's been gone like three years. <laughs> oh, but hold on, Dr. Ho, let me ask you this. Because... Uh, in my department, we're in a similar position, right? Where we had uh, a chief, a long-term chief. He was here for a long time. He left, and now we got a new chief coming in, right? But because he was in power for so long, a lot of his rules and regulations and ways of doing business are still a part of the company. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that's difficult for new leadership or new management to come in and deal with because... So at my department for a long time, if we did work, it could get us into trouble. Mm -hmm. Right? Like you want me to be, you didn't want, they they would tell us to be proactive. We would go out and be proactive. And the next thing you know, you're under investigation. It's like, well, I mean, I could have just came to work, got the check and did the bare minimum. But mm -hmm. now, new leadership is like, we need y'all to be active. Well, we like for the past 10 years, we just been chilling, staying out right. of trouble. Yeah, yeah. And, and and again, like for me, that's the question. I was like, oh, he let y'all do that? Oh, you had keys for the summertime? What? You can come and go as you please when you want? So it's, it was some of those things. It's like, oh, that, that, 
that's what you let the world know. That's not happening no more. That's not happening now. Dr. J, what you about to say? I wasn't about to say nothing. I see your face. You about to say something. You be thinking. I, oh. I wasn't I, about to say nothing. We're not going to get you fired, Dr. J. Go ahead. Speak your mind. It's <laughs> for Dr. Hulk in here. Don't worry about them 10 people, 11 people right there. They don't need to speak English. <laughs> I wasn't about to say anything. I was just, I was listening to your point of view. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, I guess it's just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a very, I'm very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say introverted, but I'm very focused on my experiences. Right? Right. I, I think I, I can do a good job of guessing what happens generally, and I can do a good job of reading society. But I don't know all of society. And so I'm really only willing to stand on the things that I know for me and the things that I have experienced. And while we all make assumptions, I like to look at all the possibilities and be like, OK, well, which one of these is more likely? And I think sometimes it's more likely that it's because you're a woman, right? And I think other times it's more likely that, you know, they just don't like you, right? Mm -hmm. or, or, you know, they don't like the way you speak. Or they think you are harder than the last person who was here. And I just think I'm skeptical of filtering um, outcomes based simply on one thing. I like to look at all of the possibilities and all of the statistics and then be like, oh, so... This this pie has a little bit more in it than just apples. Somebody else is trying to get in here. Let's see what uh, Ohio talking about. Dr. J, what kind of doctor are you going to be? Hi. Um, what you say, Cho? What kind of doctor are you going to be? What kind of doctor am I? Uh, emergency medicine. Oh, my. You better do that, girl. Amen. You gonna be in the emergency room? Well, yeah, I'm actually I'm actually part time now on my rotation at Shock Trauma. Oh. So I'm already kicked in. So you beautiful. know, proud of you, Baltimore City, shorty. Ohio, <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Ohio, what's happening? Hey, y'all! All these beautiful Afro American people. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. I just want y'all to know y'all give me so much hope and inspire me and I just love every minute because it's like every day chill <laughs> it's going every day you got someone professional giving a great opinion giving us something great to go on to keep us pushing and give us something to think about you know on an educated mind for those that need it and looking for it and hungry for it. We starving for it. You know, it's not that we can't, you know, we're not, we don't have it. It's just money-wise, economically-wise, it's hard to get where you guys are at. So I congratulate y'all. It, it it's not easy. Not at all. All three of y'all. Boom! <laughs> all right. We, we appreciate you, Ohio. I, I, can't give you, I can't give you too much time because I think once you came on, I got blurry. Am I blurry on y'all's screen? Just a little bit, Kev. You just blurry, man. Blurry, right, blurry. All right. Yeah. All right. Say again. I said you just a little bit blurry, bro. You're going to be all right. All right. We appreciate you. Okay. So uh, my opinion about the Afro-American sisters being in the uh, in position, I've, I've gotten that a lot. Um, I just supervise, but I've been doing it for uh, quite some time now. Um, but the men that... Uh, my company send me have a problem with taking direct orders or whatever it is I need them to do when I need them to do it because over, you know, myself to go to my head supervisor to ask them to speak to this person to let them know who is of authority and who's not. You, you understand what I'm saying? Just to break it down so I don't have to argue with you about my position and what my role is. I'm, I'm doing my job. I'm doing what I came to do. And because you are a male figure and you feel like you, you should be in my shoes, then I feel like you should do the work like I had to get here too. I had to do the same shoes, walking in the same boots, 
that the men were wearing in order to get my position. So let me ask you this. What did they say to you to make you think that they had an issue with you because you're a woman? Um, it, it's the, the, the action. Their action, the words that they use. Um, you know, like, who you talking to? I don't take orders from you. I'm like, okay, so if you don't take orders from me, who else in here is supervising you? Because from my understanding, you came in as a crew member, correct? And you said, correct? I said, well, then that means that I kind of outrank you. But I'll tell you what, I'll call the head supervisor and have her explain it to you, have her explain it to you a little bit better than I am. And if you have a problem with the way she's explaining it to you, then we'll go to the head boss. Okay, so when they went to the head supervisor, how did that how did that turn out? She said, "Do what she told you to do, or why? Oh, you can come on up out of there." <laughs> did they do it? Yes, <laughs> they did the work. So I guess with no I'm, problem. I'm trying to figure. Why would they? No, ma'am. What's the difference between her and you? The difference between she and I is her rank is higher than mine. So and if you need this job, then you're gonna do what it is that they're asking you to do. Can you fire them? Mm, I can make recommendations. Okay. It's up to someone else to do the finalization. Of can, she, can she fire them? Yeah, we kind of, it's step. It's a protocol. I, I'm just trying to figure out, like, what I'm saying is this. Is she's, it got more, she's got more pull to fire him than I do. Right. So what I'm saying is, is it, it could be because you're a woman, right? It could also be because they simply don't respect your, your power and authority. Right, it could be your rank that they like. You know, I don't like that. Like it could, in theory, it could be a guy who doing the same thing you're doing, and they disrespect him the same way because they don't respect the authority. They don't respect the position. That's why I'm well, trying to out. Like, how do we delineate between someone who's just being an a hole because they don't respect your authority, and they're being an a hole to you specifically because you're a woman? Uh, that's hard to tell, it's but hard, right uh, because I don't know his history. Uh, on being an a-hole. Right, right. Yeah. But I do know my job, and I have to deal with them and everything else that goes along with the booty. <laughs> oh, I believe you. I believe you. Well, so, just, like just like Dr. Hawks was saying, um, we don't get to pick and choose who we work with. We just do our job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I feel you. I feel you, Doctor Hawk. You got something to add to that? I see you moving move your glasses. When you move your glasses, I know you. <laughs> I'm thinking, Doctor Hawk. You like? Oh, she on it. She on it. I love her to death. They put my glasses back on like Doctor Hawk. Guys. And Doctor J, I, you know, my dad gave me a word for you. So one day, I'm gonna have to get it to you. Okay. <laughs> stay, stay with the fight. Your husband loves you. You love him. Okay. All right. All right, Ohio. We appreciate you. Peace, y'all. Peace out. Well, we, Dr. Hogg, you was moving your glasses, so I know you're about to give me something good. <laughs> you know what? I was just, you know, because it made me think. So in a leadership role in the workplace, I guess because I'm in a leadership position, I take on more of that authority role. But that doesn't transition into the home. Like, you know, in the household, it's more, you know, more of role, like a gender role, so to say, when it comes to us. It's so funny because I remember we went to one of the teacher's weddings and Tom sat down at that table and, you know, people get, I don't, like, don't invite me to y'all weddings and stuff. Y'all can get nervous because, <laughs> because I'm um, your boss. But my husband, again, we like to have a good time. He said to them people, he was like, she your boss. She ain't my boss. <laughs> So let me ask you let me ask you this then that that being the case, do you have to um turn off being a supervisor or, or uh do you have to turn off being Dr. Hawk? Or do you find yourself is there ever a point where Mr. Tom say something and you be about to go Dr. Hawk on him? No, no. Cause I think um at times maybe, but I think that we've been together long enough that we've been able to kind of move along to say stuff to, to do certain things so okay cool 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 what up nikki 
Hey y'all, hey, Dr. Hey. Hawk. Hey, Nikki. So I'm y'all, you Dr. Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> hey y'all, hey Dr. Hawk. I, I think we've been on this platform. My name is Asia, y'all. That's my name. <laughs> Hey, Dr. Asia. Hi, Asia. Hi, Chills. <laughs> Hi, Nikki. Hi, Dr. Asia. <laughs> Nikki, what's your uh, what's your thoughts on gender roles? Well, I mean, that's such a vast, broad. I guess I, I guess in the workplace, let's start with that. In the workplace, I think that we should just do away with them. Though I can see some people's um, issue. Sometimes, because, you know, that's my thing. It's a whole part of me being Nikki is trying to see different perspectives. I think if I were a man, I might have issue with not taking direction from women, but taking direction from women who feel the need to constantly flex and then taking direction from women who I'm not, I can't trust whether or not their decision making is based on their professional aspect or what they may be going through because that's an unpopular p opinion but it's the truth a lot of times as women we can because we're emotional beings we can tend to blur the lines which is the reason why i think so many men that aren't necessarily chauvinists or have issue with taking direction from women they do find some issue in whether or not they can trust where the decisions are being made from, if that makes sense. Okay. I, you know what? I hear you. Now I'm just going to speak from my perspective. I ain't speaking for all men. I'm speaking for tales. I know men who make decisions from an emotional place, right? Very true. I feel the same way I, I would about them as I do a woman, especially doing what I do because my life is on the line here, right? So if I'm giving you pushback, me personally, I ain't giving you pushback because of your gender. I'm giving you pushback because I disagree with your idiotic idea, right? <laughs> or, or I'm genuinely just at a lack of information and I need more information from you, right? But that could just be me. Uh, Opala said, God made man and woman, made woman and man different, so there should be gender roles. Well, I, we agreed that the uh, the protection and we agree that the safety thing is the man's role and I think we kind of agree that the nurturing thing is the woman's role and we're talking typically right we know it's some men that are more nurturing than you know their wives right and we know that it's some right. women are more willing to lay somebody down for kicking in the door than some men but we're talking about as a general rule if somebody busts up in Nikki's house John gonna be the one that go is gonna go meet him first. Right. Mm -hmm. Unless Nikki is at home by herself, cause she stay up in the gun range, so we'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, but I mean, that, but see, that's what <laughs> that's what it's supposed to be though. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, got a gun for my wife. That way, if I'm not here and some pop off, it's her job to be the one who go beat that guy to stop him. From okay. Him or her from getting to the kids, right? But okay. If she's supposed to be in there with the kids. That way, if I get laid down, she's the next level. To, to go. She's not supposed to be out there with me because what happens if we both get laid down? Now we got a major problem. Right? Okay. Right. So how do you and um how do you and John handle gender roles as far as the house? Um <laughs> that's still a very much a juggling act. <laughs> um so <laughs> it is though. You know I'm always gonna tell the truth. It is because um it's no secret that I could use a little dash of femininity a little more femininity from time to time right um so and then i grew up in a in a family surrounded by men i told you that you know prior that i learned a lot of things that people don't expect women to do i i had no choice but to learn Five you know so <laughs> so like you know don't you work on cars huh don't you don't you i do i can and I have, and I do, you know, so it's those things, it's um, my yard work, that's something my husband and I both do, um, if we need to get that snow together, we need to get that snow together, so it's like certain things, certain things 
that we have uh, lanes for that I stay in and things that I don't necessarily, lanes that I don't necessarily stay in. <laughs> um, but what can I say? Okay, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I, I mean, I agree with because Julie said that at the beginning. She thinks whatever within a relationship, whatever works should work. Let me ask y'all this. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's my belief that we all have a masculine side and a feminine side, right? Men and women, right? Some people may deny that, but they lying or they blind. Is there anything that a man could do to make you feel turned off by if it was something that was feminine? Like let's say let's say Mr. Tom was uh I'm trying to think of a good example. Is there anything that Mr. Tom could do that would be considered feminine? You'd just be like, Tom, what are you doing? Not extreme though. You know what I'm saying? Not extreme. I'm saying because I can only just think of him. I can only think of like extreme, but like, like wear a skirt or what, like you know, pat another man's butt or something like that. I'm trying to Right. That those are all extremes. Right. But I mean, but nothing like, like if he decide, like if he would sew, no, I'm okay with that. Like that, that's a that's what I'm saying. That's a good one. That's a good. No, I I don't I don't think so. Nikki, what about you? I don't think so. I don't know. That's a real hard question. I think if I were to think about something that would make me like be like, what's what's going on? Uh, my husband is always um, very poised. So if he were to like lose it all the time, I would be like, "Bruh, <laughs> you all right?" <laughs> like <laughs> that would. I mean, you know, he. I mean, he. He got his. He got his ways, just like anybody does. But I'm saying, usually, he can. He's the de-escalator when it comes to he and I. So I'm like this. Or as you said, the pit bull, because I don't mind that term. So I'm like this. And every now and then, when he matches my energy, I get a little concerned because I'm like, wait, what's wrong? You know? Mm -hmm. But so if he was to not be able to keep his stuff together, I'll be like, what's going on? Uh, so, okay, I got you. Julie said, go ahead, Dr. Hope. I'm going to say now, if he decided he wanted to take up ballet, that would be a question for me. You know what, Dr. Hope? <laughs> No, <laughs> no Dr. Hope, Dr. Hope is doing a good job of bringing up examples. You know what I'm saying? Like she said, you know, that's a real, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so imagine if John, imagine if John came home with like, "Yeah, I want to take ballet." What would you say? <laughs> I'd be like, "Do we need to have a do we do we need to have a deep discussion?" Not that I feel like men can't dance because I mean like even as a hairstylist I worked with braiders male braiders uh -huh. it was a guy that was a loctician beside me and he had six daughters and a wife so you know there there are ways that you can go over into each other's lanes mm -hmm. but if I was to see him in a tutu and a leotard I don't know well okay what about this one this one might be a little bit better but in the same realm what if he said I want to be one of the. This was Mr. Tom and uh, Mr. John. Would you feel some type of way? If they say, you know what I want to do? I want to be one of the one of the guy cheerleaders. But they're not out there doing all stuff that women do. But they're the ones that gotta catch them and, and hold them and catch them. You know how they throw them up in there. Uh, Doctor Hawk said, Mr. Tom. <laughs> I'm gonna be like John. You ain't sick. You trying to grab them women's booties? Uh, <laughs> Doctor, <laughs> that's what I would be like. Uh, Mr. Tom can't do that at all. He can't do that. <laughs> uh -uh. But he can sew and crochet because that that could you he can do that in the house. That's fine because you know that's to me like if he doing that, he's choosing to do that because he's looking to start a business or something like that. But oh. I mean, but I would want to play football if there was a way for me to get into football. Because I played basketball in high school. I was a forward guard. But if I, if they would have let me get into football, I would have done it, okay? And I'd be doing a better job than my quarterback right now. I'm just saying. See, they got football out here for females, but they want you to be in Victoria's Secret underwear 
with your cheeks and stuff hanging out, running up and down the field. So we're not even going to really call that a sport. Mm -hmm. No comment. Um, my wife says, what about <laughs> doing nails like the Asian man? I don't think I would have an issue with that. I don't think I would, too. And, and I think it's because, too, like, you own a hair salon or you do hair. My, my prior life, that's what I did, too. So I've run into men who were straight that did hair and men that did nails, too. So yep. okay. it's about to get that coin. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Let's see if my man Tyrell going to come on here with me before we uh, close out. Here get another guy's perspective. Tyrell, you coming on, man? Hey, Tyrell. What's going on, guys? Hey. How you doing? Good, Ty. I'm being fat. I haven't eaten all day, so I'm, uh... <laughs> I stopped to get a couple of tacos before I went home for my actual dinner. You and Nikki <laughs> come on my show. You and Nikki come on my show body shaming yourselves. Y'all don't, don't bring that over. Oh, no, I wasn't body shaming. I was just saying that I was being fat because I was about to eat. <laughs> I don't want to hear none of that. Yeah, that's not body shaming. Listen, Chiz, when I say that I'm fat, like, I embrace being pleasantly plump. I don't, it's not a shame. This, these curves, I worked on these curves. Babies help me mold this body and everything. So I ain't shame, I ain't body shaming. Yeah, but society typically uses that word to body shame. So that's why I look at it that way, right? Um, well, no, to me, like, huh? It's me. He like to eat. He like food. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm a foodie. I'm gonna try. I'm actually trying tacos from this new space that just opened up. So, oh, okay. Uh, you want to talk, or you, or you, or you want me to let you eat? Because I, oh you. no, I can. I'm. Li I was listening in. Okay. How do you feel about uh, gender roles within relationships? Uh, I'm kind of on the same page. There's, there's a limit to what you can do. Okay, hold on. So let's talk about this, right? Are you saying there's a limit to what you as a man can do? Or are you saying there's a limit to what you, you can do, period, like for women too? Both, on both sides, there's a limit to what you can and cannot do. Um, because just like they said earlier, they would question their men if they wanted to put on a tutu and, and go ballet. I would question my wife if she wanted to do something that was on the same extreme on the masculine side, which I can't, I can't really process a, a same extreme on my side right now. But if it was, if there, if I could think of one, I was like, yeah, hold on. Wait, what, what, what are you actually trying to say to me right now? Like, um, okay. what about uh, what about this one then? Let's think of something realistic. I'm gonna say, what's something from woman that would be masculine? That you know, well, I could tell you this it wouldn't necessarily be, I wouldn't be triggered by it, but I don't want my wife cutting the grass. Same, I don't want my wife cutting the grass now, unless my wife is like a real live, like you know. Uh, what what are those people called? Uh, uh, not a gardener. What are, a landscaper, right? If my wife is a landscaper, right, then yeah. But if I came home from work and my wife was outside just cutting the grass, it's like, yeah, my job. I don't even take my job. It's my job. I cut the grass. You can sweep. You can come sweep up the little particles and stuff. If you if you if, if, if you want to use a leaf blower, you can use a leaf blower. Oh man. You, you stepping on my toes, man. You stepping on my toes. See, I gotta. I I kind of don't agree with that one, only because my father's current wife and he are both landscapers, so she runs half that business without my father present at all, any given time. And at any given time, if you go to their house in North Carolina, she just might be cutting the grass if my father doesn't have time to do it and. It's not, and it's <laughs> overgrowing. Yeah, that's different, though. Yeah, that's, I'm if it needs to be cut. Yeah, but, but see, my thing is, I don't care how much grass need to be cut. You're supposed to tell me, hey, the grass need to be cut. And then I cut it. You know why? But I can't. I 
that could just be me too. Because I take pride in cutting the grass and it's something That I actually oh, never. you take pride in cutting the grass, but when your uncle told your father you need to get your butt out there and cut the grass, you wouldn't take me like, hey, Michelle, I need to cut the grass. I'd have cut the grass, right? I've always liked cutting grass because it's peaceful. You same note as a child. Every summer, my dad had all of us, uh, all of us, no. me and my two sisters, out cutting grass for the business. Now, my family knows, don't ask Tyro to go outside and cut no grass for the business, because I'm not going. Because <laughs> you were forced to do it, you were forced to do it as a kid. Oh, yeah, I'm not cutting no grass. You better not ask me to start no lawnmower. You better not ask me to get no weed eater. Don't ask me to get no hedge trimmers. No nothing. Because I'm going to look at you and I'm going to be like, isn't there Townsend and Son out here? Track. See, my wife said I ain't got to worry about nobody. I worry about now, listen, this was a whole subject on one of these talk shows oh, that yeah. I was watching. Now, my son, Josiah, is four. And my baby can cook, okay? He makes lamb chops. He makes some. He can make salmon. He makes tilapia. He makes stuff. I teach him everything. And so we started him year before last, boys, when it comes to men. Um, but there are so many famous, world-known male chefs and they make a killing. And my baby loves to sit back and watch people try his food. Like, that is his Christmas every time he cook. Yeah. So. Like, the most successful chefs that you see on TV are men. It's yeah. It's a male-dominated field. It is a male-dominated field. It is not a female-dominated field. So, and this comes from, like, for me as a child, if you'd ask seven to 22 year old Tyrell I wanted to be a chef mm -hmm. and I could always cook and I still can cook but I wasn't I was raised more traditionally southern where like we weren't allowed in the kitchen but you get to like my teenage years when everyone when everyone was in the kitchen I was in the kitchen with the women cooking why the men were in the living room watching the uh, football game and everything. Now, mind you, I could I could jump over and I could be just as loud and rowdy with the guys. But you put me in that kitchen, I can cook you, and you'll never know the difference. So I'm wondering if in households, if we thought, or you know, because that's the question, uh, they'll say to kids. That's for boys and that's for girls. If we did away with that, would there be this whole thing about gender roles? So, um, two things. So, I respond to what Dr. Hawk, Dr. Hawk, that's what that he talks about. Um, I forget which country it was. It was one of the, uh, uh, one of like the Scandinavian countries, or, I don't know, one of them Northern European countries. They kind of did that, right? Like they, they quote unquote constructed or manipulated society to not have gender roles. And, 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 and when it came down to picking careers, they found, that women when just women pretty much still chose careers that had to do with dealing with people and men still chose careers that ended up dealing with uh things science technology and stuff like that so there is a there is 
one example that's out there, I don't know. You know, I just take it So as to say that it's kind of like innate in us when we're born. Like yeah, I mean, like on average, men and women are pretty close, right? Right. In terms of say, like uh, something that would be considered. Uh, Ag like aggressiveness, right? Men, most men and women are pretty close. But men are tip. So if you were to go find the 100 most aggressive people in the world, they would all be men. Because once you get to that super aggressiveness, right, it tends to be mostly men, right? And so it's the same way, like, if you talk about, like, nursing, women typically like to, 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 to deal with people and have conversation more than men do, which is why you see more female men. because they because women typically like the care of people. So when left to their own devices, women still pretty much are like, ah, oh, I like talking to people, I like conversation and all of that good stuff. And dudes are still like, hey man, give me my gadgets, I'm good. But the kitchen set, right? Why y'all think they were tripping about the kitchen set? For me, my family um, here, my husband and I, we didn't really, I had a conversation with him because I really know that guys are like, I don't know, I don't want to say all guys, but some guys could get into that. This is what girls are supposed to do. This is what boys are supposed to do. But I wanted to talk to him about it because it was no surprise to him that our son already was coming in the kitchen and saying, Mommy, I want to make this, or can I help with dinner? You know, um, so I had a conversation with him, and he was like, I don't care. He was just like, if he likes to cook, or he wants to learn to cook, then let him learn to cook. But I just wanted to have that conversation with him, and the reason why I figured it may be a trigger was because you hear a lot of things in the way of what boys are supposed to do and girls are supposed to do, and how much that influenced the way that they live their lives, which I feel like some of it is like concrete, but largely it's a bunch of BS. Um, so can I ask a... No ask one a, trade that a child learn is going to mold them into being whatever. You know what I mean? So I feel like your child is either going to be what they're going to be or they're not. That's that's how I feel. And, go ahead. I, I'm sorry, Tyrone. Yeah, so I was gonna I was going to say that pretty much going on the same line they're gonna do or be whatever they're gonna be because you if a child likes to cook or if a boy likes to cook and a girl likes to build that doesn't inherently mean that they're going to be opposite or be uh, be attracted to the opposite or do whatever they're, that doesn't i think what we have is a false correlation based off of preferences because we correlate things naturally to certain things we do it even with words we will correlate a bad connotation for a word and that word definitely doesn't mean that but because it's so normalized and it's so and it's used in that fashion so often that it is automatically associated with that meaning Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's the same thing when we say, okay, well, boys shouldn't cook. Well, hold on. Hold on. How do you expect him to feed himself when he's single? Survival. Come on. They got to survive. And then what about, what about laundry? Uh, how are we going to do laundry when, 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 his, when his baby mama, or sorry, sorry. I didn't know that. <laughs> when, 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 when his significant other is mad at him and walks out. <laughs> What are you going to do? Wear stinking drawers? And then you wonder why that same male is financially illiterate and financially unstable because he doesn't know how to take care of himself. So now he's mm -hmm. not buying new clothes every single day because he doesn't have the capability and the understanding to wash the same clothes that he bought last week. Well, I'm going to say this. I'm guilty. My daughter and my son, and they don't know how to wash clothes because I do it. <laughs> Nah, I don't want to touch this, my wife. This I don't want to touch no. my wife. But 
they need to learn how to cook, even if it's just popping something in the air fryer. Because I'm going to tell you, once they got to a certain age, I said, I'm going to cook this day, this day, and this day. Them other days, y'all on your own. Because I know, that's right. Going to waste, I'm like, so. Hmm. I was going to say, we were, we, were giving, we were giving meals. My mom and the adults in my environment would cook, and they would cook enough. And that would be enough food for us to eat for about two, three days. And we would eat that leftovers. If we decided that we didn't want that, we had to figure out what we were eating. Spaghetti. We had spaghetti often because that was the one that stretched throughout the week. Spaghetti. <laughs> you had you had tried. I, there, was, there was times, and this is why I don't like eating the same thing over and over again now. And why I will go to the grocery store pretty much every day and, and buy food to cook or buy, like, small meat portions, and again, it's just me, so it's easier for me to do that, but that's the same thing. I will go to the store, and I'll buy chicken today, salmon tomorrow, goat the next day, because that's how I choose to eat, but I also know how to cook it. And encourage these men to cook, because when they get into that date, and that's a plus, some little girls be like, girl, he cooked for me. He cooked for me, girl. Let me tell you, Cause let me tell you, my husband, when I first started dating him, okay, so I dated my husband eight months outside of my home. He wasn't even allowed to come to my building. I had an apartment with my daughters. So I would meet him outside my complex. So he didn't know where I lived. So for eight months, I dated him before I even kissed him. And we were dating for, we were hanging out a whole year before I let him meet my kids. But when he came to meet my kids, baby, he. He came in my house with grocery bags, made this huge spread, and my daughters was at the table like, we like him, because he was throwing down, okay? <laughs> one of my, one of my first, one of my first, so me and my fiance, we um, talk for about, because we have a long distance relationship, so before we actually met the second time in person because we met in person that's how we exchanged contact information she went back to her state i stayed where i was and then the first time i flew to her i think it was like the second or third day i cooked for her and to this day we are engaged and my fiance still has not cooked for me and i've cooked for her <laughs> multiple times hold on hold on so th this is what i was gonna say though um i think tyrell i think you said it like uh, the kids are going to be into whatever it is they're into, right? And that's true. But I think it's important, and when kids are into things, to allow them to, to see it through because you will hinder their growth and their ability to learn about it, and they'll be behind everyone else in that particular field. So if you have a little boy that likes to cook, it's very important that you that you nurture that because he's going to be in competition with other men and women later on who like to cook. And while you was being forced to do something that you didn't want to do, right? They was cooking, right? Or well, if you have a little girl who wants to, I don't know, play basketball or something, the, the sooner you start her, the better off she'll be. Now, I know that in certain circles, um, certain stigmas come with being in certain circles. And that's just right. Really cooking thing right but um and i think that's why certain parents are kind of iffy on getting their kids into certain things because there's a culture or a perceived culture that exists within certain um genres of society you know or, or, or career field yeah. and i think you know we all just want the best for our kids so um, can i say but something that might that might get me canceled, but it's okay because I ain't, I ain't popular right now. Anyway, okay. I went to an event. I went to a church Sunday, and the pastor was talking about uh, about uh, triggers. She's a she's a licensed psychologist, and and part of her sermon practices, she uses a lot of psychology to deal with that. I was talking to an individual. And this individual just so happened to be a homosexual male who um, I just have a, I have an extended friendship with from like years and years ago. And one of the things that I asked him during one of our conversations was, a, I asked him, I was just like, 
with everything going on and people saying, okay, I was, I was born this way, I, this happened to me and this made me this way, X, Y, Z, one, two, three, not out of ignorance or disrespect, I asked him, I was just like, what was one of the reasons why or what, why did you choose this lifestyle for yourself? Just asking a very general question respectfully to this individual, which I have a really good relationship with. And with this person's permission, I've been able to share this, by the way. They said that they were this way because their maternal figure was so aggressive and mean and evil that they wanted to be a better woman than their mother was hmm. because of the amount of triggers that their mother gave them. Hmm. Hmm. And so I was just like, I was just like, hold on, because that caught me, that caught me off guard. Because I was just like, I don't even know how to really respond to this. But it Same does. Up. The reason why I, the reason why I want to tie this into this conversation is because sometimes we have to be careful on how we handle the interests of our children because the way we handle it can cause a trigger to cause them to do something that we inherently did not want to happen in them. Mm. So saying, okay, well, cooking's for boys, well, then, or, or cooking's for girls, well, okay, well, why would I just be a girl so I can cook? Because I like cooking. Yeah, I would tell my son, you don't have to, you don't have to be a girl to cook. You could just be a great boy cook. But what, but, but what happens if when that's already a trigger and, and, and a parent doesn't have that dialogue? Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's like, like every cross that we carry isn't the cross that we created. You know what I'm saying? And that's just kind of how life is. And it sucks, right? Like, we're all, a lot of us are unpacking stuff about we're unpacking a lot of stuff that is our responsibility but isn't our fault yeah right very true right that's just, that's just part that's just part for the course and i mean nobody like like nobody gets out of this thing unscathed because none of our parents are perfect and none of us are perfect parents so there's mm -hmm. something that i should be doing or not doing for my kids right now that's probably the norm that 20 years from now, they're going to be like, yo, why, did, why, why were we doing this? Or why didn't you do that? Or why did we do this? Because you just don't know at the time. Or or you just remove from knowing what's necessarily best for them. But if you, you know, if you can head it off at the path, then that's important to do so. If not, then I know Tyrell buffering, but it's still your friend's cross to carry. It's still his cross to bear. And there's no he could blame his mom and, and blame society, but he still got to do what he got to do to be the best that he can be. And that's just, that's to me, in my opinion, that's what makes people great, right? When you like push through all of like, so when I was a kid, right? Some of y'all might've heard this story before. They had me in the, um, we back then we called it the slow class. They thought I was slow. I guess now that you say on the spectrum. Wasn't nothing wrong with me. I was worried about my mama, right? And I'm an introvert. I know y'all see me do this every day and I talk to people, but I need time to recharge. When I'm done with the show, I go sit outside by myself, right, and recharge. But the fact that I didn't talk as a kid, once I learned to embrace who I am, became like a really good gift. So I carried that cross for a little while and now I get to come on here and y'all like talking to me. So it's all good, you know? So, I mean, well, I was take a picture. Go ahead. I was going to say, well, even if you were on the spectrum, nothing never, that don't mean anything is wrong with you. You know, my oldest son has Asperger's autism and he speaks Japanese. He does sign language. He taught himself how to write the Japanese, German, English, Spanish. Um, He did that on his own when he was nonverbal until he was four. So, the way that that mind works, listen, it's, it's, a, it's a really fascinating thing. But even still, I think what's really great about the times that we are in, even though so much of what is going on in our 
around us is sad and disheartening. What is good is the fact that we have the tools and the knowledge to know that when something is broken, we go get it fixed. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, so back in the day when my mom was coming up, when things went on in her home, we did they didn't talk about it, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then when something was going on with your child, you just ignored it or you denied it. You didn't go get your child help. You didn't get any type of um, outlets for your children to be able to um, open up and tell what their struggles are. You didn't have any of that. Well, you had it, but people weren't utilizing those resources the way that they are now. So that's what's good about the times we are in now because I feel like we are a lot more aware and conscious of how many things that these kids have to deal with. You know, I just tell my sons, all I'm going to ever expect from you is for you to be your best self in whatever that shows up. Like, you know what I mean? So, And I said it to my daughters. You know, they are adults now, but I used to tell them every morning I would wake up and say affirmations with them, how beautiful they are, how smart they are, because all of those little ingredients um, is what is going to help most. So even though that young man wanted to be a better woman than his mother was. Um, it's, it's mainly coming from a place where he was like, whatever you did wrong, I'm going to make right. And so that's all we want to do right now in these days is just do our best for our kids so that they can show up as their best selves. I mean, I was sad to hear. That kind of took me back when he said that. That's, that's sad. Hey, hey Tyrell. Yes, I'm here. You got anything in closing? No, except for the fact of heal, everyone needs to heal themselves. Whatever that healing process looks like, whether if it's in religion, therapy, uh, meditation, crystals, whatever you decide to do, heal yourself before you decide to pass on trauma. Mm, yeah, I agree with that. Dr. Hawk, what you got in close? Um, I, I, I like what he just said. You know, heal yourself first, but um, I'm looking at Coach Tasha's, um, you know, um, pin comment down here. Stop focusing on gender roles in the house, um, and just do what works best for us because we got to look at it as individual households. Because what works in one person's household, as far as roles are concerned, may not work in the other. You do have some men that stay at home dads, and that's what works for that household. Um, so we just all have to strive to, to find our happy place and, you know, see and make sure and find out what works for us and where we are happy at. Nikki, you got anything in closing? Uh, I would just say that um, we just, I, I'll second everything Dr. Hub said, and I just think that if we all just strive to be our best self in whatever way that that shows up, like I tell my kids, then we'll just be better off, no matter what it looks like. As long as you are your best self, then you're going to be good, no matter what role or what lane that falls in. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with all that. I think it's important to understand what your responsibility is over your life. Um, psychotherapy, therapy, counseling, life coaching, all of that, good, all of that stuff is very good to help you understand who you are, why you are the way you are, to help you attain the goals that you need to attain. And um, my main thing is just be you, man. Like, they gonna talk trash about you, whether you're good or bad in their eyes, whether you're successful or unsuccessful, whether you high or you low, they gonna talk bad about you regardless. So, attain your own level of happiness, your own level of peace, Love the people who love you. That's very important. Love the people who love you. You don't have to chase. You don't necessarily have to chase love. Roll with the people who love you. Be the best version of yourself day in and day out. And um, through doing so, that'll help you take your power back. Peace. Take your power back. <laughs>